this is the third element, this is the fourth element, this is the fifth element, and so forth. So actually what we have here is a function. Okay, so we have actually a function. All right, so the function, let's say, will be from the, um, okay, so call it f. Okay, so let's define the function f that goes from the set of natural numbers to this, let's say, the set of real numbers to the set of, let's say, a set of omega, okay, in this case. Okay, but here is it's actually a set of real numbers or set of natural numbers here, we call it this case omega. So in general, we have, for instance, that the, actually the image of the first element is equal to A1, okay? So the image of the second one is actually A2, et cetera, et cetera, right? So in this case, we have that basically we have a function from a set of natural numbers to, the, to an abstract set, and that function generates a sequence. You understand? So a sequence is actually nothing but a function from a set of natural numbers to a set of certain abstract set. It could be real numbers, or it could be rational numbers, or whatever. I mean, it depends on what kind of sequence you would like to have. Okay, but it could, it could be also something else. For instance, a sequence of functions or whatsoever. Okay, you understand? Okay, so this is actually what a sequence is. Okay, so then, okay, so then f is a sequence. So any function, okay, that goes from the set of natural numbers to uh, the NAP subset is actually automatically a sequence. Okay? I hope you understand this. Now, what is the limit of the sequence? And now I'm going to define this using the abstract definition. So, what is the limit of the sequence? You all know actually what the limit in notation A is. Okay? So, lemma is blah, 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 limit, blah, blah, blah. You have seen this notation. Okay? So, um, let me just, I mean, you don't need to write it down. Okay? So, but the notation for that is this. Okay? So if you see like this, so some, uh, something like that, so the limit of a n as n approaches infinity is equal to a. So you can say that here that a is the limit of the sequence. Okay. But what's the definition of that? So how would you define this? Okay. So let's say that in that case we say that a is called okay. So the element a, which is from the set omega, is called the limit. of the sequence, and I call the sequence a n, all right? So a n is a sequence, so we have that a1, a2, a3, etc., etc., all elements from omega, okay? If the following, if the following condition holds, okay, basically you don't need to write it down, so if blah, 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 so actually, basically, what you have is this. All right, so for any, this is going to be a little bit difficult if you seen, if haven't seen this before, for any epsilon greater zero, okay, there is a natural number, okay, and I call this natural number n prime, okay, or capital N, let's say, Okay, so cap a capital N is also an element of the set of natural numbers, okay, such that for every natural number which is not less than the number of capital N, we have that the distance, okay, so the distance of these two every the all following members to the limit is strictly less than epsilon. Okay, so that's the definition. All right. So suppose that you know epsilon is just an arbitrary small distance. Okay, let's say like one over two billion or something like that. So let, let's say it's an actual small distance. Then no matter how small that distance is, you can find a member from the sequence from which all following members have a distance to the limit which is strictly less than epsilon. Do you understand this? Let me repeat, so that's the definition. Okay, so lots of people find that very, you know, challenging and intellectually, you know, demolishing, let's say. Okay, but this is an in indirect definition. So what would be actually the limit? Just imagine that. So for instance, let's say, um, I mean, just, just, just let me give you an example. So what the limit of the following sequence would be in co constituting that definition. So let's start with the element zero, and then one over two, 
then two over three, then what? Three over four. Next. What's next? Intelligence test? Four over five. Four over five, okay. Five over six, right? So where does this sequence go to? Okay. What's the limit? Okay, good. So the limit is one, obviously. So basically, this, the definition requires the following. Okay, so no matter how small, let's say, the distance of a member to, to the limit is, okay, you can find a member of the sequence where all following members have a distance which is strictly less than that. Okay, so no matter how small you choose the distance, you can find you or you can identify. Okay, you can identify a member from the sequence from which all following members, so all upcoming members, have a distance to the limit which is strictly less than that. Okay, so even that. Okay, so all following members will have a distance which is strictly less than that. Okay, the battery is low, guys. Okay. Sometimes this is what I suppose. But let me ask you a question. Maybe I can <laughs> save some. Well, I was wondering why does yeah. n have to be bigger than capital N? No, um, because of the following members. You mean let's say you have like you know the one hundredth member, okay. okay, that you identify. Then uh, the one hundred first, the one hundred second, one hundred second, uh, third, and so and so forth. These are the following members, okay, and the following members will have a distance to that which is strictly less than the distance that you pre-specify, uh, pre okay? So no matter how small it is, you're always going to get even smaller than that okay. for the following members. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay? Yeah. Makes sense? Right? Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, so when I first I was, when I was a youngster studying that, uh, you know, I didn't understand what it is about. So <laughs> basically I had my difficulties to figure out what it is. Okay, so for all epsilon greater zero, there is a natural number such that blah blah blah. The distance to the limit is less than that epsilon. Now, you know, when you're reading that, uh, it doesn't make any sense. But when you think about it, it means basically the following: so no matter how small the distance should be, you're always going to get a member where all following members have a distance which is even less than that. Okay, so that means confidence. Okay, for instance, the sequence we considered here, which which goes like this, so 0, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, uh, two, no, sorry, 3 over 4, uh, 4 over 5, 5 over 6, etc, etc, etc. Okay, now that converges to 1 and not to any number because we can get arbitrarily close to the number, you understand? So convergence means that you can get arbitrarily close to the limit, okay? So if the limit exists, there is a possibility to get, get arbitrarily close to that, but you never reach the limit. That's also an also interesting point, okay? You understand? Now, let me just, okay, so illustrate, maybe I have some better left, I'm not sure, okay? I tried to, but um, unfortunately this is, it's not gonna work, okay? I've been, I was up all night, so, um, that was the problem, okay, so I didn't have any time to charge it. And uh, maybe it lets me a little bit, so we'll see, okay. I apologize for that. Okay, let's go back, maybe save some. Okay, I got 5% now, okay, maybe we can do like 10 minutes, okay. All right, so. Now, so convergence means that the actually the you can get to the uh, you can get arbitrary close to the limit. Okay, so as you can see that the sequence gets okay, so the sequence gets arbitrarily close to the limit. So there is a possibility for that. And there is no possibility for any other number. Now guys, just pay attention. So for instance, um, define a sequence. Okay, so we define the following sequence, so on. Okay, basically, I mean, you can see this here. So, so for instance, I consider another example. Okay, so the limit, the limit is actually one. 
Okay, so this is the limit of the sequence here. Now, let's consider another example. So for instance, let me just say that A n is a sequence on the rational numbers. Okay? You understand? Now, the thing is this. So for instance, and I define this as follows. So this will be 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n. Okay? Now, for instance, what is the first member? Okay, so the first member of the sequence is, I mean, if n is equal to 1, so you have 1 plus 1 over 1 equals 2, 2 to the power of 1 equals 2. Okay, so this is the first. Um, the second is a2. Okay, so 1 plus 1 over 2 equals 3 over 2. 3 over 2 squared equals 9 over 4. 9 over 4 equals 2.25. Damn it. Okay. I know I don't have any battery. Don't waste my battery. Okay, so this is the second one. What's going to be the third one? The third one is when uh, n is equal to 3, so 1 plus 1 over 3 equals 4 over 3. 4 over 3 to the, to the 3 equals um, 46 over uh, 7, uh, 7, uh, 7, uh, 27, sorry. No, 64. 64 over 27. Good. Okay, so that's the third one. And what would be actually the limit of the sequence? And maybe you remember that. D. Uh, the order number. But the problem is, okay, so, I mean, let's call it, okay, so, let's call it, which is not precise, so A infinite would be actually E. But, but, okay, this sequence, okay, okay, so this number is not a ratio number. So that means that the sequence A n does not have a limit, guys, have a limit here in this case because that is the sequence which is defined on the set of rational numbers so even the sequence of rational numbers okay might not have a limit in the set of rational numbers okay that's the point you understand so basically it's very important guys where you define the sequence Okay, that's, okay, so depending on, actually, it's all, this sequence does not have a limit in Q, right? All right, so although you might, I mean, you, you, you'll be familiar with the oldest number, so that's, that's very important. So this, this thing does not have a limit, okay? Understand? Okay, of course the limit is E, but E is not a ratio number, right? Okay, so since it's not a ratio number, th the sequence does not have a limit in Q. Right? It has a limit in R, but it doesn't have its limit in Q. So if, let's say if you constitute that as a sequence on Q. Okay? So the sequence would only have a limit if, if, if we specifically define that to be, you know, the set, uh, the set uh, omega would be actually the set of real numbers. But we didn't define real numbers yet, so I'm, I'm going to do this here also in this, this chapter. Okay? All right. See, let's see where it goes. Okay? You understand this? Okay? Now, there is actually a very important theory which states that um, so if a, if a sequence has a limit then the limit is actually always unique okay so the limit of a congruent sequence of a congruent sequence is unique so a sequence cannot have two limits Okay, so it cannot have two or more limits if it's congruent. Okay, so all right, so the a sequence can cannot have two or more different limits. All right. So now let's check it out. So how does it go? Okay, so because that's in, that's quite interesting. Okay, so and let me prove this quickly and then we can stop. So because there are some basic things we can talk about, so and better is low anyway, so I mean, if you want to try to you might have some questions, so it's alright. Okay, so let me try to prove that quickly. So suppose that we have uh, let's say suppose okay, so suppose 
that you have the sequence converges to A and the sequence also converges to A prime. So in, and A and uh, A and A prime are different. Okay, so that means that the sequence has two different limits. Okay, suppose that's that's the case. Now, so, okay, then I continue next week. All right. <laughs> And um, maybe if you have questions right now, because but don't forget to that I have an appointment at 10 o'clock with the first student right now, so um, I would like you to ask her to, to, to respect that, okay, if you have questions. All right, and um, please do not, as I said before, please do not forget to submit your uh, topic of choice. And let me know if you want to work that uh, on your own or you want to work with somebody else. If you want to work with somebody else but you don't have a teammate, just let me know and I will post this in a group. For instance, for the Monte Carlo simulation, I think there is somebody who's looking for a teammate, okay? So if you want to choose topic number six, for pricing, okay, for pricing derivatives, just let me know, maybe you can find, you will have the opportunity to work with somebody else if you like. Okay, guys? Now, okay, see you next weekend. Uh, you get an assignment this week as well, okay?